Welcome to Redbeard and the Den of Tools. Howdy ho guys and gals, it's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear, back again here in the den, and today we got something special for you. Oh, it's been so long, but Harbor Freight has finally come through, and they have dropped three new tools in the Hercules line for us, and they are, I just, I can't believe it, they're 12 volts. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know, I I guess we did know that at some point uh, we would be seeing 12 volt tools from uh, from Harbor Freight, at least in the Hercules line. Seeing as the Herc uh, 20 volt chargers that come out their tools now clearly state right on them that they will charge both 20 and 12 volts. Uh, I guess some of us were maybe hoping that we might see, oh, I don't know, a uh, Hercules 20 volt circ saw or recip saw first. But, you know, got to be happy with what you get, right? <laughs> anyway. Enough uh, yanking their chain, I think they get the point, but let's see what they have bestowed upon us. We've got here a new uh, a drill driver, an impact driver, and a torque uh, setting screwdriver. Yep, now hold on, I know, I know, I can hear your fingers tippy-tapping on that keyboard. Let's slow your roll for a, mem a moment there. Tell you what, let me demo these for you first, we'll go over them, then afterwards I'll try to answer a bunch of your questions before you even get a type of them all out, okay? So just sit back, watch the video, and then if you still have questions, go ahead and uh, post them down below. Okay, let's get this started with a quick flyby of the tools. We got the drill, the impact, and that is the torque screwdriver that I was talking about. Yeah, the uh, drill, it looks like just a reduced size version of the, the regular drill. Uh, they all come with their accessories, as we talk about. The drill's two-speed. The impact driver is, well, it's an impact driver. One nice thing is that, unlike a lot of 12-volt tools, the battery uh, sensor, whatever, tells you how much left on the battery, the, the meter, is actually on the battery and not on the tool. So you can check your batteries before having to insert them. Comes with a bag, comes with a charger, comes with a belt clip. I don't use belt clips. Okay, here is the torque screwdriver. Uh, as you can see, it fits really great in the hand. It, it's, a, I would say, maybe a smidge too small. Uh, again, I have really big hands. Uh, but uh, I felt the grip was comparable to that of the regular 20 volt tool. Uh, as you can see, size comparison. The, uh, it's, it's two speed, just like the, the drill itself. And uh, you got forward, reverse. And all that. I mean, as I said, it's essentially the same thing as the drill. It just doesn't have the uh, the chuck on it, which makes it nice and easy if all you're doing is you know uh, putting in uh, you know uh, screws and such. And in fact, let's get to work on this battery here. I know you guys are going to want to see inside the battery. I didn't go inside the drills themselves because they're dead simple. They're not as complex. They're, they're, they're not brushless. There's just, they're really basic on the inside. Uh, these do come with LG batteries rather than the uh, the Samsungs you see in the other stuff. But I will say the battery, the, the construction on the board's really nice. It's a nice, simple uh, pack there. Uh, good heat sensor on the board and everything. Um, and here's the, uh, the drill set up with the chuck. The chuck's rubber, unlike on the, uh, the other one. And you know what? Somebody said go big with the uh, spade set on it and see what it could go through. So we're going to go inch and a half. This is ridiculous. I don't think most people would ever be using inch and a half for something like this. Okay, well, considering what we put it through, I think it did a pretty good job on that. Uh, definitely, you know, that is not what this tool is designed for. I just wanted to show what it could do if it needed to. Now, this is the uh, the drill, I'm oh, sorry, I keep going, drill driver, the torque screwdriver. Uh, as it's essentially the same thing, I just want to demonstrate that it had essentially the same capacity.
And while I get this set up, I thought, let's have some comparisons. So this is the 20 volt Hercules with a dead battery. <laughs> dead battery. <laughs> Apparently it helps if you charge them. All right, here it is with a, a fully charged battery. As you see, it tears right through it. Again, you're using something though that has one third more power in the power pack. So it's going to handle a gun like this a lot easier. And while we're doing it, let's try the uh, the warrior. Uh, this is uh, you know the, the oldest Cubs. This is his his set. Trying to see if he can eat through this. Still trying. Still working at it. Maybe not. No, I had to defog my glasses. <laughs> I'm gonna go get some coffee. Does anybody else want anything? Uh, you see that time limit? Mercy rule, maybe. Now remember, this is an 18 volt tool. 20 volt. I don't know how that goes. Oh, and <laughs> yeah. So that is definitely a home gamer's tool. Okay, let's put this thing up against something it's more capable of, capable of more, it's more designed for. This is a, uh, a a smaller spade bit, and as you can see, it, uh, it has no problem with this. Okay, now for a bit more absurdity. This is the drill with a half inch bit in it. Again, you, I wouldn't recommend trying this. This is definitely at the max capacity for that chuck. And as you can see, it's struggling with it. The drill's got a sensor in it uh, that controls how much power goes to it. And you can see it kicking in as it feels that it needs a little bit more power. Okay, let's step it back to something that's more suited for, and this is a, a quarter inch bit in here. And as you can see, it, it handles it without a problem. Okay, now let's have some fun with the impact, shall we? I got a uh, torque bit in there, we got some three inch deck screws, and let's see what we can do with these. And I just drove this in as far as it would let me just to show you the kind of power that it had. It, it would, it, if the shank of that uh, adapter hadn't gotten in the way, it would have gone right through the piece of wood. All right, test time. Here we go. We're going to do five with the 12 volt, then we're going to do five with the 20 volt. All right, there you go. I mean, no surprise there. Again, you got a third more power in the 20 volt, so it's going to be about a third faster. So, and this I'm using the 20 volt to take out the screws put in by the 12 volt. And then I'm going to use the 12 volt to take out the 20 volt screws, just to show you that, well, A, that I know how to put it in reverse. And here's a quick comparison with the uh, the torque screwdriver, just to show you without impact that it can still handle this job. Don't know if you'd want to do it all day, or if you're 
you know, this, this is really inexpensive, you know, uh, soft wood. If you're doing something harder, you really want that wood back. But here's what the screwdriver is really meant to do. And the first setting here, you know, I drove it in. I have to figure out where the, uh, the right torque setting is. And then once you got that dialed in, you can just repeat this without fear of going past the surface or damaging your workpiece. All right, well, much is said about, you know, these being smaller and lighter. So let's throw them on the scale, see what we got here. And uh, maybe we switch it over to pounds here. That's not it. There we go. Two pounds, six ounces. And here's the full size at three pounds, one ounce. The drill driver, 2.8. I guess two pounds, eight ounces. And 3.9 on the full size. And you see you save a little bit of weight. Here's the 12 volt battery versus a 20 volt battery. And again, since we're having some fun, let's throw the Warrior on there. Boy, ha after holding all these other drills, you can really feel the quality difference. And again, since we're here and we're doing it anyway, let's see what the Craftsman weighs in at. And it's basic battery pack. I didn't use any of the extended battery packs. These are all just the basic battery packs. There's the DeWalt. See what else we got. Oh yeah, the big old cobalt. That, that's a beast. Granted, that's a hammer drill driver combo. There's the impact and the cobalt battery pack. All right, there you have it. I gotta say, I was fairly impressed with these tools. I've had them for almost a month at this point, and I've found that, you know what, I'm grabbing them probably more often than I am my 20 volt tools. Now, that probably has a lot to do with the sort of work I've been doing in around the shop and stuff. And I've also been catching up a lot of uh, stuff around the house, honeydew kind of lists and such, uh, as well as I've been building some computers and working on some other electronics with the Cubs and whatnot. In fact, believe it or not, the tool that I thought I would use the least, which is the Torx screwdriver, is by far the tool I grab the most. <laughs> Go figure. So anyway, I know I promised I would try to answer your questions even before you type them out there. So let's get to it, shall we? First question that people are going to ask is, why in the world would we go from 20 volt backwards to 12 volt? Well, I can't say as to why they released them now, but what I can say is that 12 volt has come a long ways. Uh, that with the advent and use of lithium batteries as well as uh, better motors and stuff, uh, 12 volt really has upped its game and now competes much more closely to the 20 volt products than uh, the uh, the lower power stuff used to. Now, uh, I'm not gonna say that it, it can replace it, but it gets pretty close for, I would say probably 80%, maybe 90% of the jobs out there. Except for the real heavy duty kind of stuff, 12 volt will do most of it for you. Okay, that leads us into question number two. Isn't 12 volt just for, you know, DIYers and home gamers who, who can't afford or want to use the really professional stuff because pros would never use 20 volt, right? False. Fake news. Nah. <laughs> anyway, I joke, but the reality is that pros use 12 volt tools all the time. Uh, just keep your eye out. Look around. There are several trades where 12 volt is, in fact, the, the, uh, the preferred go-to tool. Now, these are usually jobs where there is a lot of repetition and as such, a lighter tool is often preferred. Also, where the jobs don't require as much horsepower. In fact, often where less horsepower is required because too much uh, horsepower could damage the workpiece. And these are jobs like electricians, HVAC guys and gals, uh, low voltage uh, phone and cable installers, uh, IT and electronics professionals, uh, and then your general installers, say people putting in uh, cabinets, people installing carpets, people installing windows, all sorts of stuff where you're driving screws repetitively all the time. And you got to make sure that you've got that uh, that torque setting set so that it'll do it fast. It'll do it quick. It won't damage the workpiece, but you can keep your workflow going. You can you know move on to the next one quickly. And that kind of leads into the next question was, what's up with that screwdriver? It looks like a drill driver minus the chuck. Well, here's the trick. <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly what that is. And that is specifically, as I, I mentioned, it's for those type of trades that I talked about above. Um, now, that doesn't mean you're not going to find a use for it in your shop. 
but the target market is mainly people who are driving screws all day long just not heavy duty kind of stuff no lag bolts or deck screws and stuff like that now as you saw in the video you, you'll certainly do deck screws but that's not the target market the target market is people who are going to have that uh, be relying heavily on that torque setting so that they can move fast efficiently without worrying about damage to the workpiece mostly it's going to be people who are say putting together stuff like that harbor freight workbench all day that has like 500 freaking screws in it or building a server rack that's got a couple hundred screws and all sorts of stuff. I'm Trust me, I've been there, done that. Or let's say you're installing faceplates in a brand new office with like, you know, 120 rooms. And you got to put a faceplate in every, what is it, eight feet or so? Oh my gosh. And you're just going through there and on the 87th time, just repetition, it gets so mind-numbing. You're just over and over and over. And if you don't have one of those those torque setting screwdrivers on that and you're just going along and you're like i want to be done with this freaking idiotic job and couldn't they hire a monkey to do this and i can't wait to see debbie tonight Ooh, i wonder if she's gonna be wearing that skirt crack yep there goes another faceplate i'm not saying that i've cracked five of them in a row <laughs> i deny it deny it till i die but i'm just saying there's a reason there are tools like this all right next question so why didn't they, you know, and I'm talking again about that, that screwdriver, why didn't they just do what like Fine and Fest Tool and others have done where you get the, the screwdriver, but then they also give you a quarter inch chuck bit that pops in there and converts it into a drill driver. I mean, no brainer, right? Well, I did some research and uh, here's the deal. Unless you do some really hardcore engineering with it, which would drive the price up to say like Fine and Fest Tool, um, there's some stability issues by because by the time you put you know that in the socket and then out to the chuck and stuff you've got a gap there about uh three quarters of an inch or so and it can introduce some wobble uh so on those higher end tools yeah they can use materials because you're paying for it right well most uh, honestly most average go-to 12 volt tools don't do that they i looked it up and you know dewalt and uh Milwaukee and all of them, they all do the same thing. Uh, now, there are third parties where you can go and buy a uh, a, a, a third party, <laughs> a, a, an aftermarket chuck that will do that. And for probably, you know, 85% of your jobs, it'll be just fine, even if there is a little wobble in it. So why are the batteries, this is the next question, so why are the batteries not in the handle like they are in the Milwaukee, the Ridge, and others? Well, it turns out this was a future-proofing design choice. Yeah, you see, most industries rely on the 18650 battery. The, what the industry is doing, though, is they're looking for ways to up their game to get more power. And as such, they're moving to something called the 21700. Uh, now, whereas the 18650 looks like a, uh, a larger AA battery, the 21700 just takes it a little further. It's a little bit longer. It's a little bit thicker. Oh, hold on. Hands off the keyboard to, to keep it clean out there. And what that means is by going to these larger batteries, they won't be able to fit those battery packs. I think there's three of them currently in the handle now. And uh, to be to be honest, they've even had to stretch the handle. Uh, and I'm talking about the Milwaukee and such here. They've had to stretch that handle to the limits of comfort to fit that battery pack in there as it is. So they'd either be forced to stick with 18650s put only two of the 21700s, which would not be more power than three 18650s, or switch to the pod kind of design like you see on the Hercules. And then, of course, then if you do that, well, then now you've got an uncomfortable handle with an external pod. So kind of, you know, anyway, that that's the reason why the Herc team decided to go with this. They're, they're future-proofing it. Um, and, and I guess, honestly, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, in fact, I, I've not been a fan. I mean, I think the tools are fine, but like I had the uh, the rigid 12 volt, and I use that at my office all the time. One of my first uh, review videos on here is of that rigid uh, tool. You can go back and, and look at it right now if you want. Anyway, the point is they've done it to future proof it, and now as a bonus side effect, if you will, you get a tool that's got a slimmer, easier to hold handle. Uh, the weight is balanced better because rather than having the weight of the motor at the top and the weight of the batteries in the middle, you now have them uh, counterbalanced. 
And on top of it, you got something you can sit down flat and will stand on a table, which is fairly convenient if you ask me. All right, next question. Are the batteries interchangeable between the 12 volt and the 20 volt tools? <laughs> Hold on, I don't think the bear's lost his mind there, but you know full well there's somebody out there going, hey, I wonder if I could like use this and pop it in. The no, no, you can't. They are not interchangeable. The 12 volt will not fit in the 20 volt. The 20 volt won't fit in the 12 volt. And even if you could, my guess is that the, the, uh, the brains in the box there on the battery and the tool won't talk to each other. <laughs> They're not that stupid. But here's the good news. If you have the Hercules 20 volt line, as I mentioned before, those chargers, which are rapid chargers, mind you, will charge the 12 volt tools. Now, the reverse is not true. If you buy just the 12 volt system, the 20 volt chargers won't charge the, the, the 20 volt batteries. Yeah, but still, I mean, if you've already, you know, got them going, then you don't have to set up a, a whole bank of more battery chargers, which is nice. All right, next one. How much do they cost? Well, this is not the, the best part here, the, the funnest part, if you would, for me to answer. Uh, and let's just remember that uh, Harbor Freight has this kind of thing that they do. They, they come out high at launch, and then they see how the market reacts to figure out if they've, you know, where they're at. And then they dial it back in, you know, usually bringing it down a little bit. And then eventually we see coupons, all right? And remember, you know, the, if you haven't seen it, the Ten Commandments for shopping at Harbor Freight, <laughs> always have your coupon. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm hoping that eventually we will see a price at or about, you know, there. But for the time being, this is what it is. But I'm pretty sure that we'll see a price reduction on these fairly, fairly soon. All right. Next question. Will there be any other tools? And if so, when? Yeah, you knew that was coming up. So here's what I've heard. Yes, there will be a whole line of 20 volt tools and accessories. Now, I don't have a full list of what all is going to be on there. But I, I from what I heard, it's going to be quite a few tools. Uh, and the first of these tools should be landing, let's call it mid-March, April, maybe. Um, there's the you know, slight delay, you know, all the stuff comes from China, and what do we got coming up? Chinese New Year, so everything slows down and kind of grinds to a halt. Uh, anyway, I don't have specifics as to what the next tools are that are going to be released, but uh, the hint was that they're going to be automotive-focused, so with a little digging, I think what we're going to see is probably something like, uh, I think there's going to be two of them, probably like a three-eighths or quarter-inch impact wrench, I'm guessing. And yeah, for those of you who don't know, 12 volts making its way into the automotive segment as well. Last question. All right, this is one I know that everyone's going to ask, and that is, where can you get a sweet Berkeley shirt like this? <laughs> well, I've been in talks with Harbor Freight on that. And by talks, what I mean is that I keep pestering and they start looking at me like I'm a talking dog, which is absurd because everyone knows dogs don't talk. That said, well, whereas we don't have any of these uh, nice Berkeley shirts available, honestly, uh, unless you're, I looked into it and I think uh, they'd be like $80 for a, a good, you know, bowling style shirt like this. So I don't think anyone's looking to spend that much, but... If you are looking to buy something nice and support the channel, you can get yourself one of these fine Red Beard in the Den of Tools sweatshirts. We have t-shirts and stickers all available in the merch store. Links below the uh, the video there. Okay, okay. I've run my muzzle long enough. Uh, and, and I know you probably have got more questions and whatnot. So uh, leave a comment down below. You can uh, ask a question opposed to comment what you think about the tools or just talk about you know at length about how good looking the bear is you know yeah, looking good huh anyway post it all down below remember i do try to read every comment all right that's all for now hope your 2019 is off to a great start take care everybody and as always shine on <laughs>